in this final session, we're looking at how we finish our daily prayers. And the prayer that we use is the one that Jesus taught his disciples when they asked him, Lord, how do we pray? So it's the Lord's Prayer because it's the one that Jesus taught. And it contains all the elements that we need to live out the Christian life. In fact, as one famous writer puts it, in a sense, learning to follow Jesus is learning to pray the Lord's Prayer. But what is in the Lord's Prayer? Um, if you're anything like me, you said it at school time and time again and said it rather quickly and never really thought about what it meant. So we're now going to look through it phrase by phrase. Our Father in heaven. At its core, the Christian faith is about a relationship with God. And right at the beginning of this prayer, we remind ourselves how God is God to us, that he is our father. Now, you and I may not have had perfect actual fathers, but this one in heaven is. He cares for you, he listens to you, and he loves you. Hallowed be your name. In a way, that's a funny expression. I think the easiest way to explain it is by thinking about what the word name meant. In those days, your name signified everything about you. So your name was really important. And when we hallow God's name, we're giving him respect and praise for all those different aspects we know of his character. That he's the mighty one, that he's our saviour, that is our creator, that he loves us. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. God's kingdom are those places where we people put God as their number one. So when we pray for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray for all our areas of society, that they might see justice and fairness and love. When we hear about situations around the world, it's quite right that we pray that God's kingdom will come. But it's not only for things out there, it's for our lives as well. But our lives will be following God's kingdom. And that's why we follow that phrase with the next phrase. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. So this, we're going to take a break for a moment and think about what we've done so far. So far, as with our daily prayer as a whole, we've started with God and who he is. In other words, we haven't started with ourselves and our own needs, but we've reminded ourselves who we're praying to. So that when we come to our own needs, they'll fit better into the working of God's whole kingdom. There's many a time when I come to God and I just have my own list of needs. But the Lord's Prayer reminds me to pray better by reminding myself who I'm praying to. Having said that, we're now going to come to that part of the prayer where we talk about the needs that you and I have. Give us today our daily bread. This is really asking God to give us the things that we need. He may not always give us the things we'd like or want, but we can always ask him for the things that we need. And I don't just think that includes food. It includes all the practical things you and I need to get through the day. And I think the wonderful part of the Lord's Prayer is that it reminds me that I'm not just praying for holy things out there, like missionaries and the Archbishop of Canterbury. No, God is interested also in the needs of your life. And so you can pray with confidence to a God who cares for you. Forgive us our sins. You may find it an encouragement to know that every single Christian struggles with wrong thinking and wrongdoing in some way. 
it's sometimes difficult for us to re recognize and admit but here is a space where we can come to god realize what we've done wrong and ask for his mercy which jesus won for us on the cross i find this really helpful to do regularly daily even it helps put our sins behind us and i'd like to suggest the more we do it the more we'll discover about true Christian freedom. Now, if I've been forgiven, then the onus is on me to forgive others. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And I do appreciate that sometimes forgiving someone for a particular sin can be very, very difficult. But knowing that we've been forgiven can help us to make a start on that journey. The next phrase looks ahead to the day in front of us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You may be surprised at how the Bible describes the Christian life, not as a walk in the park, but as a battle. And as we think about the evil in the world, it's not just evil out there, but we recognise that temptation and sin can spring all too easily inside each one of us. And so for all those areas of temptation and the battle we all face with evil, and for all that the day brings to us, so we ask for God's help. That was how the Lord's Prayer finished. In fact, the Roman Catholics leave it there and there's nothing wrong in that. But the Protestants, such as myself, add this extra bit. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There's a great comedy sketch where a vicar is leading a congregation with a mixture of Roman Catholics and Protestants. And when they get to the Lord's Prayer, some finish it early and some keep going, it's brilliant. But I like this last bit. It reminds me that it's about God's kingdom that is growing. It's not simply about me and the bits and pieces I would like. I'm realising as I pray the Lord's Prayer that I'm part of something far bigger than myself, and that's an adventure like no other. Now, in the daily prayers, I say the Lord's Prayer slowly so that you can join in with me. Um, and he's our Father, so we can say the prayer together. And then the, your way of sealing your agreement is with a single Hebrew word, Amen. It means yes, so be it. As you can see, there's a lot to every phrase. And you might prefer to say it yourself more slowly, reflecting after each phrase what it means for you. And at the end of our daily prayers, I use a prayer that can be found in the New Testament. Because as you go into your life, it's a lovely reminder that God goes with you in his love, in his grace and in his fellowship. And my prayer is that you continue to know these things in your life and they will grow within you. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.